There's a new movie out featuring two leading characters with mental problems. As the story begins, the young man is being released from a psychiatric institution after some kind of breakdown, and the young woman is trying to cope with a recent divorce. So they're both very vulnerable and under a lot of stress. How they come together and manage to get along is the storyline. Hollywood loves this kind of movie. Actors really love this kind of movie. Because it gives them a chance to act, to show what they can do, to stretch. When it comes time to hand out the awards for best acting, the Oscars and the Golden Globes and the Critics' Choices, all go to actors who play characters with mental problems. Because that's real acting, acting with all the bells and whistles. It takes a lot of acting to play a nut. It doesn't take much acting to play a, norm, a normal person whose behavior is like that of all the people you meet every day. Ho-hum. But if you have someone who is mentally disturbed, or even better, autistic, then you have to break out the true acting chops. What a performance, people will say. He was so convincing as that crazy guy. So pass out the Oscars. You can look it up. Time after time, the Best Actor Awards will go to people who play someone with a mental defect or is suffering from a mental disease, including Alzheimer's, or who is just flat-out crazy. In the crazy category, you can include historical characters and psychopaths. Sometimes, thank you Lord, both. We've known from the start, the villains are always much more interesting than the heroes. The dark side has always had its certain fascination. Villains, in their unpredictable, often violent lunacy, are spellbinding. Playing a great villain calls for an operatic performance. Heroes are like skim milk. They're reliable, orderly, boring. Hollywood knows full well that the only way to juice up a hero is to make him crazy, too. The detective began as a fairly straightforward and consequently insipid hero. Then he began to be offered with ticks and quirks, warts and all. Soon he became nothing but warts. Now, more and more, the detective comes not so much with a sidekick as a handler, because the detective is crazy as a loon, and it takes a lot of acting to play that the loon. Those ticks, those quirks, you can see it. Anyone can see it. All that acting. The crazier your character is, the more you can act. If you're stuck in a role without that deep underground power of strangeness and oddity or depravity, forget it. You'll just disappear on the screen and never get a mention at awards time. So you choose, if you can, one of the plum roles, the weirdos, the wackos, the nuts. It's the same thing in nature. We embrace and exalt the unusual and overlook the plain. In fact, the poor plains, the trouble with them is that they were plain. Great soil, flowers and grass, mostly flat land, and now they are mostly under asphalt. The unusual, the rivers, mountains, canyons, gorges, waterfalls, these are reserved, set aside, protected. They are nature at its best. People say that when you look at a majestic landscape, you see the hand of God. So too with flowers, the gaudier the better. Robert Maplethorpe wasn't taking pictures of daisies and mums, I don't believe. We favor the exotic, we elevate the strange, even though we would not, in our own lives, want any part of this. We would not want to live under a waterfall. We would not want to be mentally disturbed, God forbid. But we admire the rapids, are enchanted by them, even as we see their danger, and when an actor gets a chance to play a complete nut, they jump at it, knowing that juicy role will bring in the hardware and advance their career. There's a new movie coming out featuring seven leading characters who are psychotics. Hollywood gets it. See?